Today's adventure begins as a recording of this Wednesday, June 1st, about 8 a.m. Cool, crisp 40 degrees at the moment. I am at the Nevada Northern Railroad Museum, which I believe is not open at this hour. But it is a beautiful day. I'm heading to Utah. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. File this one under not having a game plan and just roaming across the beautiful countryside, which is what I will be doing. Stopping at spots that strike a chord with me, spark my interest, like where I am right now. Starting from here in East Ely, or East Eli, E-L-Y. One thing that's, you know, when you travel and you are not a local and you go through towns, it's difficult to know the pronunciation of certain areas. E-L-Y. There's a train. I have my car. Will not be boarding a train. But I will be journeying into the landscape of Nevada. Sometimes I say Nevada. Sometimes I say Nevada. I'm inviting you to join me. <laughs> Shall you? There's my shadow. Hello. I am really loving being out on the road. Spent a little time in Southern California. Drove from Florida up into Illinois and then across I-80. And then across into Northern California. Went to Oakland. Went to Seattle. Flew to Seattle and came back. Drove down to Anaheim, LA area. And now I am traversing through some other states and I do not know when I will be heading back to Celebration Florida, but I will at some point. The sun rose not too long ago, so it's not quite elevated completely in the sky yet, a little after eight. Gonna cover some ground. I love it out here. Whoa, is that a snow shovel or a snow plow? I think it is on the front of that train right there. And as I'm back in my automobile, noticing some classics over there. One day I'd like to have a truck like this. Classic truck. Similar to something like this. And if I ever, you know, I don't say retire, but if I ever slow down a bit, say in a local area, it'd be cool to have something like this, just to be in a small community and have a truck similar to that and just live life. And there's another one right there. Nice. And then on the outskirts of town, while on the subject of relics, the form of automobiles. Take a look at these. These could tell some tales. If these rusted out items could talk. Nice. You know, I don't know much about classic cars, but they are nice to look at. The older I get, I have more of a, an interest in them. Maybe it's the nostalgia factor of just a simpler time. I like this box truck. Old tow truck also. All on display here under peaks of that little short mountain. Getting a little fuel here, fueling up in the town of McGill, Pony Express Gas Mart. $5.64 a gallon. I was also able to grab a coffee 
from that gas station convenience store. Zip code here in McGill, 89318. Here's the post office. A little barber shop, the McGill Club. Oh, is this the theater next to it? I think it is. Still has the awning, marquee. And then this old neon for from Marie's Cafe, flower shop. Well, no, it's just a cafe with a flower for the neon. Inside the window is a pirate. Here at Marie's Cafe. It's not open at the moment. With the sun just glimmering over the top of these former stores, this Rexall has an interesting story. Closed in the 80s, early, early 80s, and sat empty for a couple decades because the owner of the Rexall, his wife passed on, and it's been turned into a museum. Two years ago they reopened, they opened it. I checked the sign on the door, they are only open Thursday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. I missed it by a day because as a recording of this, it is Wednesday. But a very fascinating, fascinating place. It was not originally meant to be a museum, but everything was just left in here from the early 80s. Price tags, everything still on it, on the shelves inside this place. And looking in the window, it is on the National Register of Historic Places. The building was built back in 1907. So it was open for 75, 80 years before it closed. Just getting a little peek inside the front door glass window here. You can just see it still looks like going back in time. like walking into the past, except I can't walk in, I just have to look through the window. You can even see the washboard sign there that they put out for the weekends. Look at all the stuff in the cases there. Nothing new, everything from early 80s and prior. I find this stuff very fascinating. And the unique story of this kind of adds to it as well. Someone just didn't decide to put products in here as a museum. Everything was already in here. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before. Even have an old soda fountain in there. And the pharmacy in the back. And I'm glad I got gas back there. I just saw a sign. So there's no fuel for about another 130, 140 miles. I'm on Highway 93 North at the moment. This is what I refer to as a Wheel of Fortune moment. I'll try to figure out what it says. A couple letters up there. This old motel that has certainly seen better days. A little rest stop across the across the way where a few trucks are parked but this side pretty pretty desolate yes the pony express station here in shelbourne well shelbourne station no longer open there's a fuel pump here that has been completely torn apart The inner workings there of the price point. This 
That's the bar. A lot of broken glass down below here. Looks like the name of the place was written, painted on the ground down there. This tree has fallen out front as well. Kind of split at the roots there, split at the base. And around the back are some other buildings. I love that the birds are chirping. Even in decay, there is beauty. Old horse barn would be my assumption. See a little makeshift rest stop over there where the trucks are. Drove a few more miles down the road I was on, turning onto this road now, where Cherry Creek is eight miles down this road. Got the cow guard here, cattle guard. And just to reassure that when I get down to Cherry Creek, there will be no services and no fuel. But I am fascinated by this one-way road leading to the town down there. I'm going down. Slowing down for a moment just to see where this old railroad track used to be. So I'm going over the tracks there. Remnants of a tower off in the distance. The railroad used to roll right through here. This old mining town. Got the crossing sign there. Tracks are still there, all grown over. Cherry Creek. There's an outhouse, a couple outhouses there. Also passed another sign stating that the pavement was about to end. Right up here. It's a bunch of trailers out there. Doesn't appear as if anyone's living in those. A couple of them probably are inhabited, but most of them look like they're just sitting there, kind of rotting away. There's a little foundation here as well. Here's the local saloon, Cherry Creek Saloon. That door right there is just kind of swinging open. No one in that, but door still opening and closing. It's just the wind. That's the road I drove in on there. Certainly is beautiful, the landscape. There was another sign for the town museum. 
does not appear as if it is still open, however. Now there are residents out here. Here is a, a bunch of goats, a herd of goats. Some pet goats. Hello goats. So people do live here, and so do goats. The one right there staring at me. Okay, see you later goats. Take care. Drove a little further and pulled off. That sign over there says McGill 63 miles away and Ellie or Eli, where I started 75 miles away. So I've already made quite a bit of a commute. And I am now here in Curry, or Curry. C-U-R-R-I-E is the name of the town. And this is a mercantile and RV shop, cafe, bar. It says, welcome traveler store hours. But I do not believe that this store is open. Got a few little sheds here, houses here. Now that I'm looking at these, these might be part of the RV camp that used to sit here, because that is a restroom facility there. A few dogs over there barking out into the ambiance. A horse hotel, RV sites, rock specimens, ice cream, and cabins. Oh, spelling out crossing. So you got the town name, Curry there, and then crossing down here spells out the word. Crossing, those dogs are really curious what I'm doing. No personal checks. You know, some places, different areas of the country will call, call soda and cola pop. Say soda pop, pop. I always think of soda pop Pinsky from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. And I like the Pepsi sign up top there, that retro Pepsi sign. Around the back of the building, all kind of items here on the side of this wall. Elevation 5,799 feet in this town. A few old relics over here too in the form of automobiles. Off in the distance, snowy top mountains. Not a lot of traffic out here either. Not a lot of gridlock. Most of the time, I got the road to myself. Well, and of course, make the foot. 
some sheep right there. This is this is an incredible view. The bunch of sheep and the mountains with the snow in the background. So beautiful. Hello sheep. This is just one of those spots where I could just sit here for quite a few moments and just let it all soak in. Beautiful scenery, beautiful animals. Nice. That's a great old sign right there. This laundromat over here has the most interesting mascot. Very happy soapbox. Burping up bubbles. Love all these old signs. The name of this community is Wells, but this arrow points to an old ghost town called Metropolis. So I'm gonna head that direction, out of Wells to Metropolis. And it lies about six or seven miles down this desolate road to Caligard. And the road has now gone to unpaved sections. It's a quest to get out of here, out here. I am thankful I have a reliable car because if it were to break down out here, it would be not a whole heck of a lot of fun or if it didn't start back up. Remember Metropolis in memory of the violent, violent, valiant pioneers who settled and built a city here, giving so much to all of us in pursuit of happiness and security. Today we enjoy the fruits of their efforts. First settlers in 1910, many followed in 1935. Many who lived here aspired to become teachers, lawyers, civic leaders, church leaders, best reared great families and homes. And the town does not exist anymore. It's been erased with the exception of this little marker and a few structures from existence. The last items, post office, school in 1940, were the last things still opened. So it has been 80 years, 80 plus years since anyone lived out here any businesses thrived, existed. Let's see what's left. Quite a bit of debris in this foundation. 
scattered around, some graffiti. Got this stairwell that leads down to basically nothing now. You can definitely see tire tracks. People have been out here. I'm not the only one. But is not a beehive of activity. Way up on the top of the hill is an archway. I'll walk up there. And now that I'm thinking about it, probably should have drove my car from down there to here. You know, you never know what kind of animals are out here, coyotes and whatnot. Too late now, I've already walked it. But probably should have drove my car up here. Very impressive. And I was just thinking to myself, probably snakes out here. And I looked down for a brief moment, I stalled and realized that's just a burnt banana. I thought like for, for one moment, I thought what if that was a snake? It wasn't though, but I guarantee there's snakes out here. Someone has painted on the side here, welcome to paradise. The stairs, more stairs leading up. Look at this. All the rubble caving in down there. Fl a lot of flies out here. Looks to be somewhat structurally sound, except for some of the bricks that have kind of fallen and caved in over there. Oh wow, I spoke too soon. Look at that. Not structurally sound at all. Probably a few scorpions out here too. Snakes and scorpions. Lots of red ants. Arrive now at the last town before crossing the state line into Utah, or at least one of the last little areas, state line and Salt Lake City, where I am bound, where I'm headed, is that way, across the Salt Lakes, and then we'll be going to the greater Salt Lake area. But the Utah state line is over that way a few miles, not too far. But I wanted to show Wendover Will, and in my video here, and I also have some new developments that just came to my attention a few minutes ago as I was driving and I pulled over, started to figure out how I was going to announce this and how I was going to, to show what I documented a couple weeks ago, a week or two ago, give or take. And I'm gonna explain that now and then also talk about my time that I will be spending in the Salt Lake City area. I recently had the opportunity of going to a filming location that has been on my radar, something that I've wanted to do, wanted to document, wanted to see with my own eyes, wander around in great detail for close to a decade. And really within the last five or six years, I've been trying extensively as someone honks, they were excited too, about me getting in there. And that is the Warner Ranch. Now I've done videos on the tour at Warner Brothers Studios, which the general public can pay a fee get on a golf cart and do. This is a whole other scenario. And I was able to do that when I was in Los Angeles. But I just want to clarify, the way I do this channel, the Daily Woo channel, and always have, is not to stockpile footage, not to film more than one video a day. Basically what I'll do, I'll wake up in the morning, I will film a video, I will edit at night, and I will upload have it on private, make it live the next day. That's why I always clarify, or started clarifying within the last year, documenting the day that I am filming it. So, what I have decided to do 
is upload the footage from Warner Ranch, the Holy Grail, bucket list for me. Some might not be into it, some might, but I will upload the raw footage. It will be edited, but I'm not gonna work any movie clips into it or anything like that. I am just gonna put my day at the ranch my some stuff I might not put in there and use those for future projects because oh man I am excited that I am able to upload this footage and it will go on the Adam the Woo channel not here on the Daily Woo because I do not want to ruin the formula that I have here on this channel the Daily Woo so because this was filmed when I was in Los Angeles not to confuse anyone and not to break the routine that I have set for myself over on the Adam the Woo channel. By the time you see this, because I'm going to upload it tonight as the recording of this, it will already be up by the time this is uploaded because the way I do this daily Woo channel, not to reiterate myself, but I'm going to, I film during the day, I state the day at the beginning of each video, and then I edit at night and make the video live the next day. That's why when you watch these daily Woo videos, I say the date from what would be the viewer's point the day before. Go to the Adam the Woo channel. I will also give a little preface on that as well. It's not something that I would usually upload on that channel. In fact, I haven't uploaded on that channel in a couple of years and they were big projects. This is a rare video look into the Warner Ranch, not Warner Brothers Studios. <clears throat> If you want to see what's in there, go check out the Adam the Boo channel. It's been a while since I've put a video up on that channel. And I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to end the... Oh, also, by the way, getting in there what took a long time. And I was told that I would not be able to upload the footage for possibly a year, six months, until the ranch was torn down because it's going to be torn down. That is now changed. That information that I was given has now changed. And I can upload the footage now. I was told just a few moments ago that I am able to upload that footage. So I'm uploading it. All right, that's going to do it here on The Daily Woo. I'll see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. I am on a streak now uploading daily again here. And I feel good about it. It feels good to be on the road. It feels good to be traveling. Oh, I forgot to mention, I will be in the Salt Lake City area for almost two weeks. 12 days, 13 days, maybe 14 days, give or take. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.